Hello and welcome to my channel. Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about Islam and animals. Yes, not only Islam meddles with every aspects of humans life, it also affects animals lives. This video is also part of my personal story, of my relations with Islam and how Islam affected me towards the animals, and my journey to be a better human being, to be kind towards all animals. Bear with me, this will be a long video. First. Pigs. When a Muslim touches a pig, he or she must perform a silly washing ritual that involves washing their body parts with dirt water, to purify themselves. Not using soap, but dirt water. Yes it is stupid. Pigs are not only forbidden to be touched, but also forbidden to be eaten. Many people in the world eat pork. What I gather from my non-Muslim friends, it tastes good. The reason why pork is haram is not stated clearly anywhere in the Quran or Hadith. There is only a verse commanding not to eat it, because it is impure. Surah Al-Anam, verse 145 reads, Say, O Prophet, I do not find in what has been revealed to me anything forbidden to eat except carrion, running blood, swine, which is impure. Looking at the word impure, or in Arabic, Riji Sun, and where it is used in other verses, points out that it does not refer to physical impurity, but rather of the spiritual one. I know most Muslim says pigs are dirty animals, but which animals aren't dirty? Goat, cow, lamb and rabbit are all dirty animals. Rabbits eat their own poop too, just like pigs do. But rabbit is perfectly halal. And any diseases or tapeworm that a pig can harbor, so can a cow or goat. The question of whether the animal is clean or dirty, comes down to the farm that raises them. And in today's world, many farms are modern and are much cleaner, and comply to industry standards. The problem with Islam, is that when it teaches something to be haram or forbidden, it often comes with fear tactics. Islam made touching the pigs as such a huge taboo and inconvenience that people are so scared of it. When a Muslim touched a pig, their salats and other practices, are deemed void and null, until they wash with dirt water. Due to these fear tactics, Muslims usually hate pigs. Because of that hatred, subsequently they will hate those who eat pork too. I have zero experience with pigs, only encountered some wild boars in the jungle but that's about it. Other than that, I cannot comment much else, since pork and pigs are banned in many parts of the country here. Second. Dogs. When I was a Muslim, I fear and hate dogs. It is because of the same reason why Muslims hate pigs. Islam taught that dogs are unclean spiritually, just like pigs. So Muslims have to do that same silly dirt water washing rituals, when they touched a dog. If they don't, all future salats and rituals are deemed void and null. As with pigs, we can guess that the forbidden ruling came from the Jews in Old Testament. It is so obvious Muhammad copied Torah and Bible and put it in the Quran. But, both Christians and Jews love dogs so where did this dog prohibition came from? The Quran is silent on any prohibition on dogs. It even told a story of Ars Habul Kafi, the people of the cave, who are Muslim believers, and they had a pet dog with them, who guard the cave entrance when they were sleeping for a thousand years. The dog prohibition came from the Hadith. A guy, the companion of Prophet Muhammad, Adi ibn Hadim is notorious for narrating the prohibition of dogs. There is another companion of Prophet Muhammad who also narrates hadiths about dogs, his name is Abu Huraira. And, guess what is the meaning of Abu Huraira in Arabic? Drumroll. It means, father of cat. Abu Huraira is a nickname, his real name is Abdul Rahman. He got that nickname because of his affinity towards cats. Isn't this a clear conflict of interest? A cat person, narrates bad thing about dogs? Let's take a look at some of the hadiths by the father of cat, Abu Huraira reported God's messenger as saying, if anyone gets a dog, except a sheepdog or a hunting dog or a farm dog, 
a kiralt of his reward will be deducted daily. So this hadith is basically saying, if one owns a pet dog, one will get his brownie points deducted daily. One could literally go to hell for owning a pet dog too long. What the hell? My guess is, dad of cat is selling pet cats and don't want people to buy pet dogs, and made up this hadith and said Momo told him so. What a scammer. Also, Islam seems to have specific hatred towards black dogs. Read this hadith, narrated Abdullah ibn Mughafil, the Prophet said, Were dogs not a species of creature I should command that they all be killed, but kill every pure black one. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic by the great scholars of Islam. It is such a sinister message, why would you want to kill all dogs? Tell your Allah not to create them then, idiot. But then suddenly singled out the black ones. Seems to have a subliminal message of racism towards black people, but I cannot be sure. And this second hadith, the Prophet said, the prayer is severed by a woman, a donkey, and a black dog, if there is not something like the handle of a saddle in front of a man. I, Abdullah, said, what is wrong with a black dog and not a red one? He, Abu Dar, said, I asked the Messenger of Allah the same question, and he said, the black dog is a shaitan, Satan. This hadith is graded sahih too. For now, let's ignore the part where women is grouped together with donkey and black dogs for being the cause to nullify one's salat. We will talk about that in another video. But indeed I can confirm on this hadith is being taught in Islamic schools. I was taught to be wary of black dogs, because they might not be an actual dog, but is a Satan or Jinn. It is insane that I believed it. Whenever I saw black dogs, it would summon eternal hatred in my hearts towards them, for fear of them being the actual Satan. The Quran, however, sheds a different light on dogs. When I was a Muslim transitioning to Quranist, I was so surprised that I found about the people of the cave, who are Muslims believers, chosen people by Allah, actually had a pet dog. That was when I started to get to know more about dogs. Movies helped. Movies like Marley and Me, or Hatchie, The Dog Tale, totally melts my hatred for dogs and all I have is love for them till today. The more I learn about dogs, the more I realize that Islam's negativity towards dogs is uncalled for. Third. Apes. Islam has no respect for apes. In the Quran, there is a verse saying that Allah cursed the Jews who violated the Sabbath to be apes and pigs. So based on the Quranic knowledge, apes of today are basically descendants of the Jews that violated Sabbath. Naturally, since Jews are their public enemy number one, they easily dislike and hate apes. Most apes are not gentle animals. They are smart, but also are defensive and territorial. Show of teeth is a sign of aggression. So any humans who merely smiled at them will invite an aggressive behavior. To the rest of us, it is part of nature and we embrace them. But to Muslims, that behavior is met with even more negativity. It is common here for the Muslims to throw stones at the apes, or even have them shot, just because they are hungry and looking for food and wander to human populated areas. Due to Islam's negativity towards apes, it explains why most Muslims will feel very insulted with the human evolution theory. The evolution is a scientific theory, that has been peer-reviewed and the evidence is overwhelming. There is a slight misunderstanding in the Muslim communities about this theory though. I, too, understood wrongly about it. Initially I thought the theory says human evolved from apes. But the theory actually says, human and apes are cousins, that means, we evolved from another humanoid creature. The fact that most apes are intelligent, and we even look alike, is something that no one is able to deny. Fourth. Crow, snakes, mice, lizards and scorpion. A crow is a very smart bird. I did not even know about this until quite recently, when I saw a clip on YouTube. I will show that clip later in this video. 
Anyway, Islam taught that Muslims are allowed to kill crows, snakes, mice, scorpions and vicious dogs when they are performing the Hajj. The Hadith read, it was narrated from Aisha that the Prophet said, there are five which the Murim may kill, snakes, mice, kites, speckled crows and vicious dogs. In this modern day and age, we have understood the importance and role of every single animal species, so we do not go and kill any animals willy-nilly. Even when we are bitten by a snake or stung by a scorpion, we don't kill it. They are just acting defensively. No animals are evil, but merely acting according to nature, it felt threatened, or hurt, or it just want to feed. But in the Islamic teachings, we learnt that some animals are actually Satan or jinns. I cannot find any reference in Quran about this, but it is being taught nonetheless. Here in Wikipedia, it explains about Islamic jinn. Jinn are further known as shapeshifters, often assuming the form of an animal, favoring the form of a snake. Other thonic animals regarded as forms of jinn include scorpions and lizards. So when I was a boy, I was taught that killing house lizards are part of sunnah, and we will be rewarded for that. Here is the hadith that taught this, it was narrated from Amsharik that the Prophet told her to kill house lizards. House lizards get rid of insects in our house. Sure they poop everywhere, and that may have been the reason why the Prophet asked to kill them, since after performing the wudu, it is nullified if one stepped on the lizard's poop. Instead of teaching patience and compassion towards house lizards, Islam taught us to kill? It is so over the top and extreme, no? Rats carry diseases, and when they are an infestation, it justifies to kill them. But even now, when I caught a rat near my house I don't kill them, instead I brought them to a nearby jungle and let them lose there. Fifth. Cow, goat, or camel. These animals are very synonymous with Islam. Islam asks for animal sacrifices, and these are the animals that Muslims usually use. Each Muslim is encouraged to sacrifice an animal. So most Muslims would do this, especially near the Eid al adha usually a month after Ramadan ended. This animal slaughter ritual is said to honor the willingness of Abraham, to sacrifice his own son, Ismail, since Allah commanded it. You can only relate this to yourself if you have a children. Imagine one night you dreamed of Allah, telling you to kill your own son the next afternoon. I would have brushed it off as one of the crazy dreams that I have. No sane person would actually believe a god wanted this. A god does not demand sacrificing lives. A real Satan would do that though, if he ever existed. Islam taught that each Muslims must have this slaughter ritual done at least once in his life. As such, the demand for this is very high every year. In some parts of the world, the Islamic community slaughtered way too much. The way they perform the slaughter is cruel too. I cannot describe it because of YouTube policy but it causes slow death to the animals. Sure, most people eat meat, but the least you could do is to slaughter it quickly. But of course, any other methods than the cruel Islamic ones, would deem the meat to be haram to eat and non-halal, so they had no choice. So those are the animals that are affected by Islam directly, and why Islam is not peaceful and not compassionate towards animals. Another thing that I noticed for some time, and I think someone wrote about it on Reddit X Muslim too, is that some of these animals that Islam has a problem with, are really smart and intelligent. Particularly dogs, pigs and crows. There is no need to tell that dogs are smart. Through countless shows and videos and articles, dogs are a smart animal that can be trained and follow orders. We rarely see smart pigs though. Only recently scientists have made experiments and found out that pigs may be even smarter than dogs. That means, pigs can be trained and follow orders too. But what's beautiful about these animals, are that they are naturally wise creatures. Without any training, already they are showing signs that they are thinking and using the tools and environment available around them to achieve a goal. Let's take a look at this dog trying to save a fish out of water.
And, here is a crow using blocks of rocks to make the water level rise and that allows him to get the floating treat. It seems to me, Islam's goal is to eliminate intelligence within its followers, till it even prevent Muslims to live around these animals long enough, to observe their intelligence. But you know what's annoying? Once they see these intelligent acts, by virtue of Western science and experiments, their scholars will be quick to claim and make statements like, Oh, subhanallah, this is Allah creation. Cut the crap, your Allah tells you to hate these animals, even to kill some of them. Don't start claiming it is your Allah's creation. That's all for this time, I hope this video exposes Islamic stance on these animals, and how it affects their lives. Stay away from Islam and love all animals and treat them humanely, even if you have to kill them for food. If you like this video, consider to like, share, subscribe or give the video a super thanks. Thank you and have a nice day.